Do you find the factoring method of solving quadratic equations complicated and tedious? Are you looking for a quicker and easier way to solve them? Then this video is for you. Today we are going to learn how to find the solution of a quadratic equation by completing the square. This method will help you solve any equation in a snap. So grab your pen and paper and let's get started. There are two ways of solving any equation by this method. In the first example, I will show you both the methods. You can then use whichever you find easier. Consider this example. Method 1. We will check if the coefficient of x square is a perfect square or not. If not, then we will convert it into the nearest perfect square greater than it. Here, the coefficient of x square is 2 and it is not a perfect square. Which is the nearest perfect square greater than 2? Definitely 4. So, we will multiply the equation by 2 so that the coefficient of x square becomes 4. Multiplying the equation means multiplying each term by 2. So, the new equation becomes 2 into 2x square that is 4x square plus 2 into 5x is 10x plus 2 into 3 is 6 equal to 0. Next, we move the constant term to the right hand side and we have 4x square plus 10x equal to minus 6. Now we have to make the LHS a perfect square by using the formula a plus b whole square or a minus b whole square as per the question. As the x term or the mixed term here is positive, we have to use the formula a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab. So we can write this as 2x whole square. You can see that we have only one square term here. So the other term must be 2ab. As this is 2ab and a is the term inside the square, it clearly means that value of b is 5 upon 2. Now we need one more term according to the formula and that is b square. So in order to complete the square, we need to add 5 upon 2 whole square here. And to balance the equation, we add this to both the sides of the equation. So RHS becomes minus 6 plus 5 upon 2 whole square. Did you understand the step? Now applying the identity, LHS becomes 2x plus 5 upon 2 whole square and RHS is minus 6 plus 25 upon 4 is equal to minus 24 plus 25 upon 4 on taking LCM which gives 1 upon 4. Now to find x, we will take the square root of both the sides and we get 2x plus 5 upon 2 is equal to plus minus under root 1 by 4, which further gives us plus minus 1 upon 2. Why have we used plus minus? We make use of the sign plus minus because there are two values which give the same square. Plus 1 upon 2 square as well as minus 1 upon 2 square is equal to 1 by 4. Hence we get two equations 2x plus 5 upon 2 is equal to 1 upon 2 or 2x plus 5 upon 2 is equal to minus 1 upon 2. Let's first solve the first part. 2x is equal to 1 upon 2 minus 5 upon 2 or 2x is equal to 1 minus 5 upon 2 on taking LCM is equal to minus 4 upon 2 which gives us minus 2. So x is equal to minus 2 upon 2 is equal to minus 1 on simplifying. Similarly on the other side we have 2x equal to minus 1 upon 2 minus 5 upon 2 on taking LCM minus 1 minus 5 upon 2 equal to minus 6 upon 2 and cancelling we get minus 3 which gives x is equal to minus 3 upon 2. So minus 1 and minus 3 upon 2 are the two roots of this equation. Now the second method. First of all we make the coefficient of x square equal to unity. How? By dividing the equation throughout by the coefficient. As the coefficient of x square is 2 here, we will divide each term of the equation by 2 and we get 2x square upon 2 means x square 
plus 5 upon 2x plus 3 upon 2 equal to 0. Now the remaining steps are same as in method 1. So what are we going to do next? Right, we are going to take the constant term to the other side. Therefore, x square plus 5 upon 2x is equal to minus 3 upon 2. Next, we will write LHS in the form a square plus b square plus 2ab. So we have x square plus 2 into x into 5 by 4. If you find this part difficult, then you can use a trick in the second method. Just divide the coefficient of x by 2 and that is the value of b. Next, we have to add its square on both the sides. So plus 5 over 4 whole square equal to minus 3 upon 2 plus 5 over 4 whole square. Applying a square plus b square plus 2ab equal to a plus b whole square, we get x plus 5 over 4 whole square is equal to minus 3 over 2 plus 25 over 16 is equal to minus 24 plus 25 upon 16 by LCM or x plus 5 over 4 whole square equal to 1 upon 16. Taking square root on both the sides, we get x plus 5 over 4 is equal to plus minus square root of 1 over 16, which is equal to plus minus 1 over 4. So the roots of this equation are given by x plus 5 over 4 equal to 1 over 4 and x plus 5 over 4 equal to minus 1 over 4. Solving the first one, x is equal to 1 over 4 minus 5 over 4 which is equal to 1 minus 5 or minus 4 over 4. On simplifying, we get minus 1. On the other side, x equal to minus 1 by 4 minus 5 by 4 minus 1 minus 5 over 4, which gives us minus 6 over 4, which is finally equal to minus 3 over 2. You may be finding it confusing, but trust me, this method is very easy. You just need some practice. I find the second method simpler, so I'll be using it for the remaining examples. But it is up to you, whichever you want to apply. So go ahead and solve this one. To make the coefficient of x squared unity, we divide throughout by 2 and we have x squared minus 7 by 2x plus 3 by 2 equal to 0. Next, move the constant to the other side and we have x squared minus 7 over 2x equal to minus 3 over 2. Now we'll break this into 2 into a into b. So we have x square minus 2 into x into 7 over 4. Clearly b is equal to 7 over 4. So add its square to both the sides. As the second term is negative, we'll use a square plus b square minus 2ab equal to a minus b whole square. And so x minus 7 by 4 whole square is equal to minus 3 by 2 plus 49 by 16. Taking LCM, minus 24 plus 49 over 16. Or x minus 7 over 4 whole square is equal to 25 over 16. Now taking square root, x minus 7 by 4 is equal to plus minus square root of 25 by 16, which is plus minus 5 by 4. So the roots are given by x minus 7 by 4 equal to 5 by 4 and x minus 7 by 4 equal to minus 5 by 4. Here we have x equal to 5 by 4 plus 7 by 4. After LCM we get 12 by 4 which is equal to 3. The other value is x equal to minus 5 by 4 plus 7 by 4 which gives x is equal to 1 upon 2. So the roots are 3 and 1 upon 2. Let's try another question. Dividing throughout by 4 we have x square plus root 3x plus 3 by 4 equal to 0. 
और x स्क्वायर प्लस रूट थ्री एक्स इज इक्वल टू माइनस थ्री बाई फोर ब्रेकिंग द सेकेंड टर्म वी गेट x स्क्वायर प्लस टू इंटू एक्स इंटू रूट थ्री बाई टू सो रूट थ्री बाई टू स्क्वायर विल बी एडेड टू बोथ द साइड्स Now using the identity a square plus b square plus 2ab equal to a plus b whole square, LHS becomes x plus root 3 by 2 whole square, and RHS is minus 3 by 4 plus 3 by 4, which becomes zero. As the perfect square is zero here, it means the roots are equal, and they are given by x plus root 3 by 2 equal to zero, or x equal to minus root 3 by 2. So both the roots are minus root 3 by 2 each. Is this point clear? Now this one is for you. Pause and try it. If you have any doubts or any questions, you can write in the comment box. And don't worry if you find it difficult because I'll reveal the answer in a few seconds. So I hope you enjoyed learning this new method. Here I want to mention that the first two methods which we have discussed, that is factoring and completing the square, have some limitations. We cannot solve every quadratic equation using them. So we need another method. So to understand the more generalized method, you can click on this. And if you are new on my channel, please subscribe for more such videos. Goodbye for now.